Well, hello, good people. I'm Dmitry from Hardware Canucks. Super excited to be here to talk to you a little bit more about the Aorus Radeon RX 6800 XT Master 16G. Ooh, what a name. I also want to say big thanks to Gigabyte for having us on. And if you have any questions, let the keyboard do the talking. We'll be in the chat answering your questions. Anyways, let's set the stage for the 6800 XT because it's a huge deal for AMD fans and gamers in general. It is using the new RDNA2 architecture and the new Navi 21 core, or it's known as the big Navi. This is big news because it's allowing AMD to finally compete with the best Nvidia has to offer right now. And also, like we've been waiting for this moment for years now for them to be in that playing field. It also means that Aorus is rolling out some of the most advanced designs for the 6800 series. I mean, it makes sense, right? The best Radeon GPUs ever deserve the best cooling features and components, right? And so this is the Aorus RX 6800 XT Master 16G, and it's an absolute beast. The first thing I want to mention is the size because this is a massive GPU, and you'll all have to take this into account before assuming it will fit into your case. Here are the specs on screen and takes up just over three expansion slots in height, and when mounting it vertically, make sure you have at least an inch or 2.5 centimeters between the card and the side panel or the window so airflow will not be blocked. So of course the first thing that needs to be talked about is the heatsink since that's what takes up so much of the space. By using the new Aorus Max covered cooling technology, it guarantees the card stays cool and quiet. Look guys, there's a reason why this thing is so massive, so let's start from the inside and work our way out. Making contact with the GPU core and memory modules is a full-sized unified copper contact plate that's used to quickly transfer heat upwards into the massive copper heat pipes. There are two secondary contact plates here too, and those take care of cooling for the power distribution phases. Those heat pipes work their way upwards into the fin array, and even here there's some interesting things going on. Aorus is using a pretty unique fin design that uses angled surfaces and different heights too. Let's talk about each of these because we've seen similar designs in some of the latest CPU heat sinks, and they serve pretty interesting purposes. First up are those angles. When it comes to cooling, the bigger the surface, the better. So those angles allow the aluminum fin surface to be extended and provide a bigger space for the air to pass over. The different heights actually work to increase air speed between the open spaces, and that means more fresh air can be brought in while the hotter air moves outwards at a faster pace. To help with that even more, they've added a flow-through extension on the card's back so hot air does not get caught up in critical areas, so it's a really interesting bit of engineering. The thing is, you can have the most advanced heatsink in the world, but it could still fail if it's hooked up to crappy fans. So of course, Aura's thought about that too, and this is one of the most unique fan designs I've seen in a while. Let's start with the stack fan approach, since these may look like pretty regular fans from any other graphics card, but they're actually not. If you dive in a bit closer, each fan uses a two-piece setup where the top blades drive air downwards towards a second set of blades, a lot like how a jet turbine engine works. That other set is what Aorus calls the wind claw, and it directs incoming cool air so it's evenly distributed across the heatsink. This is super important since every last millimeter of this heatsink basically gets utilized and the fans can spin at low RPM, giving you a silent operation without sacrificing on the cooling performance. Now, the sizes and airflow direction are also a bit different from previous generation of Aura's graphics cards. The outer two fans use a stack fan design, with one being 100 millimeter wide and the other 115 millimeters, and they both spin counterclockwise, while the center fan is also 115 millimeters wide, but it spins clockwise. You may be asking why is that, and there are two reasons. Number one, it reduces turbulence, for the airflow when there's like mixing uh, between the airflow of the three fans and it also increases static pressure so the air can easier get through those fins and have actually cooling capacity. Now remember the RX 6800 XT is a high-end graphics card that puts out a lot of heat but check out these temperatures which are super under control at load inside an enclosure. And as for noise levels this is a pretty impressive cooler design. Take a listen. Ooh, that type of noise level is super impressive to the point where your case fans and maybe your CPU heatsink is probably going to be the louder component 
versus this guy. Now, obviously this Aorus RX 1600 XT Master 16G is quiet and runs cool, but the great news is they hit it with a bit of pre-overclocking, so it runs even faster than AMD's reference version. Moving back to the card though, there's a lot more than just the heatsink, since Aorus has added a few cool things for a touch of uniqueness. Of course, like a lot of GPUs these days, this one gets some areas of RGB lighting that can be controlled through the RGB Fusion software. If you have any other components that are compatible with Fusion, like a motherboard, memory, or cooler, those can be synced up at the same time too. But I think what stands out the most is the tiny LCD screen right along the card's edge that can be controlled in five different modes. First, there's the default enthusiast setting showing the GPU stats like temperature and clock speeds along with the ORS logo in whatever color you choose. If you want even more flexibility, it can be placed into three different text display modes too. There's also this cute little anime or chibi time character that hatches from an egg and gradually grows as you use your GPU more. This is the card's default mode Mode, so take that into account if you want to showcase something else. Finally, this is my favorite part where you can basically display anything you want. The text input mode works really well through the RGB Fusion 2.0 software and you can select any font and words you want and not only in English by the way because the software supports Unicode text and multiple languages as well. There's also an option to upload images and 140 frame GIFs for even more of a personalized touch. So that takes care of all the bling I think but there's actually a lot more or built into this design. Like the BIOS switch that allows you to switch between the built-in overclock and quiet modes. Basically, the OC mode is the default when you get the card and switching over to quiet lowers the power limit a little bit. It does lead to a slight decrease in frame rates, but also reduced power means the core puts out less heat so the fans can spin at lower speeds. I do want to mention that switching between the two modes will require a driver reinstall and always do the BIOS switch with the system shut off. The rear I.O. is pretty basic with two DisplayPort 1.4 outputs and a single HDMI 2.1 port. But what I love here is that USB-C connector that's supposed to be used for VR headsets, but for creatives like me, I really love this because it's a high bandwidth port on the graphics card that I can utilize with my storage. It's awesome. Moving on to the power connectors, they have not escaped the Aorus treatment either since there is a warning system built into them with a pair of small LEDs. When the light is on, the connector is not receiving power from the PSU, so you'll need to check to make sure everything is plugged in properly. Yes, we've seen this before, but the Master Series is bringing this to the next level by having the LEDs blink if it's detecting any abnormalities in the current, that is low voltage, too much ripple in the current, or anything else that might damage the card in the long term. I love this because it gives you an indication to an otherwise invisible problem that if left unchecked might cause some serious harm in the long term. I also really like what Oris has done with the backplate. Not only does it give a bit more rigidity to the card, it does also increase heat dissipation, but it's also a pretty clean look with a few nice little touches of RGB lighting. Of course, there's an opening too for that flow through cooling design. Now, a lot of work has gone into designing parts that you cannot see, like a good example with the PCB and other internal components that have all been upgraded to be much better than uh, AMD's reference specification. Like the PCB in here has two ounces of embedded copper for better connectivity across components, uh, expanded power layout, and even higher tier memory modules. Another really cool thing for enthusiasts and overclockers who use sub zero, you know, not ambient cooling solutions is this uh, really advanced aerospace coating on the PCB. So for example, things like thermoelectric coolers, dry ice, or nitrogen cooling can cause condensation to form around key components. And so this coating is supposed to prevent uh, against moisture, dust, and other things that you don't want to be around the GPU that could cause harm. The last thing that's been added is what Aorus calls a friendly PCB. It might sound odd, but it's actually kind of cool because of the advanced manufacturing process. They're able to cut down on the sharp soldering contacts and therefore like handling the bare PCB, you're not gonna be cut. It's all gonna be nice and pleasant experience, thus, the friendly PCB. All this leads to the RX 6800 XT Master having one of the longest warranties of full four years, so you can buy in confidence and be covered in the future. All right, so having this card is great and all, but how do you get the absolute most out of it? And so in this next section, we'll be talking about AMD Adrenaline Drivers, how to enable and find Rage Mode, and this new feature called Smart Access Memory, 
which is pretty cool. But there's also something I need to mention about the installation of this graphics card and some issues you might encounter. For example, if you're using a riser cable between the GPU and the motherboard that most of them currently are Gen 3, PCIe Gen 3 riser cables, while this GPU uses the PCIe Gen 4 interface and therefore there's the compatibility issue where the riser cable might not support the GPU, you might get a black screen or some other display issues. But have no fear, there are solutions. Number one, you can get a Gen 4 riser cable, although they're pretty expensive. So if you do have a Gen 3 riser cable, you can still utilize your new 6800 XT. First of all, plug in the graphics card directly into your motherboard and then in the BIOS, enable the PCIe Gen 3 compatibility mode and then use the riser cable and the graphics card should work. Aorus gives you this option on all of their motherboards. Just head into the BIOS, into the settings, click on miscellaneous, and then change the PCIe configuration from auto to gen three. And don't worry about performance because even though with a full gen four GPU, it still uh, reaches its full potential with a PCIe gen three interface. And with that out of the way, let's start off with smart access memory or SAM. This is a feature that's unlocked when you pair up the RX 6800 series with a B550 or X570 motherboard and the new AMD Ryzen 5000 series CPU. From a quick perspective, smart access memory allows the CPU to harness all the onboard memory and that could lead to performance increases in some situations. Before it was only able to access and map up to 256 megabytes of GPU's memory at once, which caused increased latency in some situations. So turning this on takes a little bit of work since it is not enabled by default. First, make sure your motherboard's BIOS is updated to the latest version. And then for an Aorus motherboard, you'll need to go into the BIOS and enable above 4G decoding and resize bar support. Those can be found under the settings and then IO port sections. Right now it's still in beta technology, so performance increases can range from none to a few percentages points, but that will probably change as time goes on. But there are also other advantages of going with the B550 slash X570 ecosystem. For one, you get support for PCIe Gen 4 SSDs, like this one from Aorus, which have really helped the whole team speed up our editing workflow. There's also the future-proofing aspect of using the Gen 4 for graphics that will eventually become important, plus Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. Enough said, these are the, some of the best CPUs for gaming and productivity right now. But anyways, after you get the RX 6800 XT installed along with the RGB Fusion software and the AIM drivers, the first thing you should do is head into the Radeon Software Control Center to check out Rage Mode. You can do this by right-clicking on screen and selecting from the drop-down menu. Rage Mode is only available on the RX 6800 XT right now and not on the RX 6800. You can find it under the Performance tab, which also shows a bunch of information about your graphics card. And then click over the Tuning section and it'll be under the Preset area. Rage Mode will not void your warranty, so don't be afraid, and it's not over overclocking. It's kind of like an auto overclock function that sends more power to GPU so it can clock higher, but the only downside would be the slightly higher temperature that the core might produce, but with a massive heatsink like that, don't be afraid. Since we will experience higher frequencies in rage mode, performance will of course get better across most games, but as resolution increases, the benefits will slowly get reduced. Either way, it's nice to have this as an option, and when combined with games that properly support smart access memory, Radeon GPUs can get some pretty big benefits. The nice thing I appreciate with rage mode is that you can enable it for specific games and specific applications rather than it running all the time. So if you want the best performance in, let's say, Red Dead Redemption 2, enable rage mode there, but the card will run at the default settings and configurations for everything else. So I guess that is it for me guys. I'm super excited to utilize this GPU in my proper gaming station and really excited to see what Aorus has coming up next.